In 1955, Toho released Godzilla Raids Again, the first sequel to Godzilla. Unfortunately, it wasn't a very good sequel. It didn't pick up the pieces of the first movie nor expanded upon its ideas. For that type of sequel, fans had to wait 30 years for a proper direct sequel to Godzilla 54. The Return of Godzilla is that sequel. Return of Godzilla ignores all of the Showa films that came after 54. This was a wise decision on Toho's part because they were able to take Godzilla back to the dark, serious political roots of Godzilla 54 to surprising success. Because of this, the relevancy of Godzilla is successfully updated by tying him to the Cold War and even going so far as to show how the Cold War affects the Japanese with surprising emotional effect. The characters are kind of a hit and miss. Goro Maki is the lead character, but he comes off as cliche and bland. The only time I found him interesting was when he tricked Naoko to find her brother for the sake of front page pictures. This pisses off Naoko and Okumura, but this issue hardly ever comes back. Maki never redeems himself as a character. There's a part where he comforts Naoko, but it feels forced since there was never a moment where Maki regretted his actions. Naoko offers little to nothing. She's just a token female character who only exists as a love interest to Maki. She's not a bad character, but nothing sticks out about her. She's a downgrade from great female characters like Emiko or Katsura. Maki's role should have been merged with Naoko's, making her both the film's leading reporter and sister to Okumura, which could have created some conflict between brother and sister with subjects related to Godzilla. Okumura has great potential, but unfortunately, it's never explored. Okumura vows vengeance against Godzilla, but he never does or says anything significant after that. By the end, you're left unsure whether his feelings have changed or remained the same. There's also a homeless guy that randomly appears during the third act for no apparent reason at all. He adds absolutely nothing to the movie and has no reason for being there. On a more positive note, Dr. Hayashida and the Prime Minister are easily the best characters and honestly, they should have been the lead characters because they are the heart and souls of the movie. Like Okumura, Hayashida vowed revenge against Godzilla but eventually learned to forgive him. His reasons for stopping Godzilla are not out of hate, but rather out of sympathy. There's a great level of humanity to Hayashida that's brought to life by Yosuke Natsuki's excellent performance. Very little is revealed about the minister, but the emotional weight behind that character is revealed through his need to protect his country from both Godzilla and pressure from the Americans and Soviets to use nuclear weapons. Keiju Kobayashi delivers an effective performance with the limited material he's given. As for Godzilla, this is amongst one of the best incarnations to date. Though he doesn't do much, Godzilla returns to being a terrifying force of nature by being more fear-mongering and animalistic without straying too far from his monstrosity. The suit looks great. It's a gritty take on the classic design. There are parts where Godzilla looks stiff and derpy, especially the Cybot, but still. The Cybot is used effectively in some shots, and Godzilla looks more menacing than ever. Teriyoshi Nakano delivers one of the best effects works in his career since Submersion of Japan. There's a lot of amazing shots using forced perspective and pyrotechnics. The miniatures look detailed, well built, and downright amazing. The military and Super X battle scenes are truly impressive, though the mechanical Godzilla foot looks very unconvincing. Reijiro Kuroku delivers a very brooding and haunting score that is one of the best in the franchise and worthy of succeeding Akira Fukube. Though the movie is not perfect, it proves that Koji Hashimoto has strong directing skills and has strong potential as a filmmaker. My biggest flaw with the movie is the editing. The pacing feels off in some parts, especially some scenes that linger on Godzilla and he just stands there doing nothing. The film is only 103 minutes long, but they could have trimmed off at least 10 minutes to quicken the pacing here and there. Overall, while it's no masterpiece, The Return of Godzilla is a solid Godzilla movie and a worthy sequel to Godzilla 54. The film has one of the best endings in the franchise. Despite all the death and destruction Godzilla has caused, the ending convinces you that Godzilla is truly a victim of mankind's hubris. With Kuroko's beautiful music playing in the background, the ending makes you feel like you're watching a eulogy for Godzilla. There's a fair share of moments like that throughout the film, and that's why I love it. The Return of Godzilla is a well-made, ambitious reboot that succeeds where it needs to, and despite its flaws, it's a way better film than the American cut, but that's a film I'll review for another day. I award The Return of Godzilla 3 stars out of 4.